Hi, my name is Lisa Ramey, and today I'm going to be doing a watercolor pencil lesson in um, really warm colors. We're going to be doing a tide pool painting, and I've got my reference photo here. We have a starfish, a, a sea anemone, and some beautiful kelp and rocks. So I like to work usually with um, a, a really good reference photo. And then I also, from my reference photo or several reference photos, I like to do a little colored sketch in either colored pencils or this time I used watercolor pencils and that's what we're gonna be using today. Um, I did start with this sketch just with some little anemones, purple anemones um, with some rocks and the background really simple, but I decided on actually doing this beautiful gold starfish. And um, I really like the pronounced shape of the starfish. It's really simplified. And then kind of adding the complementary colors around it, which um, with orange, the complementary color would be blue. And with green, the complementary color would be red. So this is a form of red with a little bit of white. So that's my first little sketch that I sketched out. We're going to be using these beautiful colors. Uh, we've got a range of watercolor pencils. And then we also at the end, if you choose to, um, you can use watercolor crayons or oil pastels to just kind of emphasize the, the color and the darkness. This is my first um, sketch that I did on the watercolor paper. I usually sketch with the color of each shape. So the starfish is orange, the kelp is orange and pink, and um, the anemone is green. And then the second step, I lock in my colors. So I'm going to show you how to color in the starfish, the background, and the kelp. And then you, you use a brush with water. And we're going to just use it just as we would watercolors. It's really nice. And um, the next stage is detailing our starfish and detailing all the kelp and the rocks. Um, so you can see there's a lot more texture at the end and you can layer with different colors and that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. So looking forward to this project, it's really fun. Um, I'll start with my first, uh, my first section, so my drawing. So um, here is my first initial sketch <laughs> that I started. Um, I used an orange watercolor pencil to sketch my um, starfish. As you can see, it's off center, which I like because you don't want to maybe have everything centered. Um, also, when some of the shapes are larger and some of them are smaller, it makes it much more interesting in your composition. And um, so basically what I wanted to show you is I just um, did a star with lines first. And so you can kind of gauge how long is this leg? How long is this leg? This leg's a little bit longer on the left side. And then the bottom left leg is actually quite a bit bigger. Um, once I get my armature and my lines down, then I draw, I look at my photograph or my sketch. I can do both usually and just so I have a reference. And um, you can kind of look at the shapes and think this is a triangle. So I'm gonna just start with my top triangle and then my, my left side of my star goes up a little bit on the left, and it's a little larger than the top. And my bottom shape is even a little bigger because it's coming towards you. So when, when the starfish comes towards you, the legs are gonna be bigger in, in um, the front, and they'll be smaller towards the back um, as they recede back. So, um, just remember that when you're drawing, it's, it's kind of hard to remember not to do every leg the exact same. Um, so then this leg is actually hidden in the kelp. And so I just, just kind of only did partial, the partial leg on the bottom right and then the partial leg on the right. And so it looks like it's a little bit twisted, which I love. Um, then this little rock is going to be right next to it on the top. And then I did the same colors in the kelp at the bottom because it's going to have pinks and oranges. And you just want to do these almost like little curves and just fun little organic shapes along the bottom right. And I started with my orange pencil. And you can have fun with this because it's really playful and organic as you can see in the pictures. Um, 
it's going to be dark at the bottom, but this, this section is going to be very bright and pink and, and orange. So we want to get those in. Here's my orange pencil. Then I switch to a pink pencil and I come into my C kelp and just draw a little bit of my curvy lines. All right, so we've got pinks, we've got oranges, and then at the very bottom, you can see it's pretty dark shadows, so I'm gonna use my blue. And um, when you think of light colors in this painting, there's gonna be yellows, oranges, and pinks. Your dark colors are gonna be blues, browns, and some a little uh, red. So I'm gonna use my darkest blue for my shadows down here, and go ahead and just make those same curly shapes in. Um, the sea kelp. Then there's a little shell on the left that's blue, so I just made an oval shape that's coming off the left side. So you can make your shapes really simple in the beginning and we'll detail them later. The sea anemone is green, so I decided to use my green pencil. You can use your light green or your dark green. The sea anemone has beautiful long um, little I don't know what they're what they're called exactly but <laughs> they're little shapes that are almost like little fingers and you can just draw them detailed at the very top and as it goes into the middle we're gonna darken that so you don't have to detail too much in the middle just in the very edges where it meets the starfish now that you have your drawing you can kind of gauge which section has which colors so when I, when I look at the starfish and the sea kelp, I'm gonna use the same colors to base in. I'm gonna start with my yellow because my yellow is um, the lightest color. And so you wanna use your lightest color first in watercolor and your darkest colors last. If there's anything you wanna save out, if you want any white saved out, you wanna leave your paper showing. But in this painting, you can see I don't really have any white um, showing in the painting. So I'm just going to look underneath the starfish. There's a lot of yellow. Underneath the anemone, you can see a lot of yellow too. So I want to start with those yellows and um, use the side of your pencil when you're starting to base in because that gives you a lot more um, leverage when you're holding your pencil like this instead of, you know, drawing like straight up and down. You can use your pencil on the side and it actually makes it like you're using a crayon. But since the pencil's thinner, the side of the pencil is the best way to go when you're trying to block in. So it gives a really nice, beautiful, bright yellow and that's going to show through in the end when you put your oranges and your reds on. This is gonna glow through and make your starfish shine. So I've got my starfish filled in. I look at my picture. There's actually some, a little bit of yellow in the rock as well. So I wanna put that in too. Go ahead and lay that in. And then also my sea, my sea anemone has yellow in there too. If you need to sharpen your pencil in between, that's fine too. Your, your pencils you, you know, needs to be sharp when you're doing these, these lay-ins. All right, this looks good. This is looking very colorful. And I think I might add a little bit of yellow here, just in the, in the kelp down below. Right at the top, it's pretty bright, so I wanna just add some yellow in first. All right. Now you can see my pencil needs to be sharpened. Um, now I've got my orange pencil and I'm going to just add in a little orange here in my pink sea kelp. You're going to be adding water in a minute, so I'm just layering the colors first with the pencils and then when you add the water with a brush, they mix together, which is really fun to see. I'm going to go ahead and bring the orange all the way down to the bottom. You can actually mix colors as you go on your paper, which is really fun. Usually with painting, um, people like to mix their paints on your palette. 
but with watercolor pencils, you can mix on your paper before you even add the water. You just lay the colors that you want mixed and then add uh, your water with your brush. And what I might do now is I'm going to add my pink to the background. So the pink's gonna go all the way, way around the starfish and into my shadow on the sea kelp right there. So go ahead and turn your pencil to the side again and you can just go diagonal, start at the top, maybe that's easiest, and then just move all the way down, just trying to miss your starfish so you keep that beautiful yellow right now. If there's parts of your paper that are left white, that's okay because the water is gonna blend it out. The colors are really beautiful in this, in this painting. Um, they, look, they, they look really dramatic and vibrant. And I really love looking at the tide pools in Laguna Beach. It's been low tide lately in Laguna the last couple months and I have taken lots of reference photos and gotten lots of pictures and you can use different photographs um, and add them into one painting. So you can take one photograph and add different elements of one photograph into your painting and then use another photograph and combine them um, to make something really beautiful. So now we just have left our, um, our little seashell, which is blue. So I'm gonna grab my lightest blue pencil first and block that in. So now you've got all your colors laid in and we're just going to add our water now. So if you have a watercolor brush, I like to use um, kind of a medium sized brush. You can use a round or a flat and I'm just gonna use this little flat today to wash my colors. So go ahead and get a little water and I start with my lightest colors first. So I like to start with my yellow. So go ahead and scrub in your, your paint and look at how beautiful that is. It's just amazing what, what these pencils are capable of doing. This is just turns right to paint. And even if it gets a little bit of your orange color into the yellow, it's really beautiful because you're gonna have orange shadows and red shadows on the sides of your starfish. So it's nice when the colors blend. Go ahead and fill in your rock and your sea kelp and your sea anemone. Look at how the drawing stays intact. You can still see the lines underneath. So you really don't need to worry about erasing your lines. That's why I like to draw with my colored pen pencils. And so keeping in the same color family, to start with, I'm gonna go into my yellows down here. And you can see that turned orange because I had orange and yellow and a little pink in there, so it turns into a beautiful orange. And then at the very bottom, go ahead and just blend that out too. Each section's gonna be a little bit different shade and a little bit um, different color. If you need to dry your brush with a paper towel, you can change your colors, uh, make sure your brush is clean, wipe it off on the paper towel, and then once you're gonna start a different color, go ahead and make sure that's a different, you know, a clean brush because you don't wanna mix your colors up right now. So look at that hot pink, that's a magenta pencil. And when you put water on it, it really brightens. You can tell it's a different, it's quite a different color. Since it's underwater, it's beautiful to have these pool where it puddles up and it dries almost like a water effect. It looks like the, that it's really underwater, which is really fun. And you go around your starfish. This is all gonna be these beautiful shadows in here because it's underneath the sea anemone. So we're gonna add some beautiful blues and dark browns. All right, I'm liking this.
and then I just colored in my shell. So this is the perfect time when, when your paper is wet to start adding your next color because this is gonna be just like you would paint with your actual paint palette. I wanna re-wet my, my starfish just to make sure it's wet enough. And then when you grab your next color, you're gonna add your orange next. Your starfish is already wet, so when you add your shapes, it's going to really show almost like just a puddle of orange, which is beautiful. You can redraw the edge of your starfish as well. Um, notice in the photograph how many little shapes are in the surface of the starfish. It's, it, they're indentations, so you can make your shapes almost like little ovals, you can make them um, like round. They don't have to be the exact shapes. Just go ahead and have some of the shapes smaller, some of them bigger, because they're really not the same. They're not just like circles or dots all over it. There's different um, patterns and shapes inside the starfish. That's what's so beautiful about it. So you could even drop your pencil in some water if you wanted to, if it was getting a little dry, that helps to keep it wet. And then um, as, as you see on the side of the starfish, the shapes kind of get a little smaller down here, so I don't have to do as big of shapes. What do you think? Is it starting to look like a starfish to you? <laughs> There's so many beautiful different colors of starfish. I just saw some the other day that were um, really almost like a pinkish color, like a pink and white with white designs on them. Now, I've got most of my orange in. You can connect some of the shapes. And when we add the next color, which I'm gonna add a little bit of brown, you can kind of see there's orange, brown, and then there's reds in the shadows at the very end. So I'm So underneath the starfish legs, you can see as it comes up to the top, it's darker um, right on the edges here. Also right on, um, on the edges by the anemone, they, it gets a lot darker in these areas here. On the very top of the starfish is the brightest, so you don't have to put as much brown. I might just put a, a few little patches of brown. There's some more brown on the side of this leg because this is turning downward. So the shadows are gonna be at the very edge in the bottom. That just helps the starfish to look more three-dimensional when you have darks, darks on the sides and then lights at the top. It makes it look more rounded. And we've got, we've got some good shading there. I think I think we're good. We could add a little bit of brown maybe here where the shadow, it's gonna cast a little shadow on the seafloor. So maybe I'll put a little brown in there. There's gonna be a little shadows in, right on the side and we can add blue in there too at the end. That'll be really beautiful. All right, this is looking really good. Here's a shadow also right on the side of this sea kelp. I'm gonna add some brown right there. And maybe I'll just add a little up here at the top. You just want this sea floor to look a little different. Um, instead of one color, it's nice to vary the color. So if one part is red or pink, you can see how it adds a little bit of interest when there's different colors or textures. Okay, next color we're gonna add is um, some little bit of darker green into the anemone. So I feel like this is drying a little bit, so I wanna add a little bit of water to this. Just perk up your first layer of watercolors so you can add some dark greens. Again, I'm just gonna use the side of my green pencil. And there's a lot of shadows in this anemone, so I wanna darken the center 
and maybe I'll leave some of my yellow showing at the very edges and you can redraw these shapes, these beautiful shapes if you wanted to. Let's just add some greens in here. See, look at when you add this side of your pencil, how thick it gets. That color really shows up. All right, I like that. As my first layer, I'm gonna add some blue and maybe a little purple later. So that's my first start with the green. So I'll go ahead and add my blue pencil and there's gonna be a little blue in these shadows. So I'm just gonna add a little water Oh, and I'll add some blue down here to this shadow too. So go ahead and re-wet your paper. And look at, look at just, since this is a little purple actually, this is violet, which is fine. Um, but you can also add your blue pencil too. So that just really pops it when it's, the, you can see the darks enhancing your, your image. So just that little bit of blue really pops your yellows and oranges. This is a good time you can add your blue into the sea kelp and you can actually redraw. If you don't like your drawing in the beginning, you can redraw it with your paint and your pencils afterwards. So I'm just going into my sea kelp and detailing that. And then in this section, this is gonna be your shadowed area. So I wanna really go dark here. You can really have fun with just being really expressive with your pencils and laying in really bold lines. It's really interesting to see different ways of adding your lines in or maybe different directions that you wanna draw. Ooh, that's a beautiful blue right there. So this section might need to dry a little bit because it's really wet, so you don't wanna tear your paper. So just let's let that dry for now. And we'll, let's go into our shell for a second because that has a little blue and brown too. This is a little dark blue inside the middle. And then you can leave some of that little light blue at the edge because the shells have that opalescent edge on them. So I wanna leave some of that light blue showing through. That's what's so beautiful about watercolor is you can let the layer shine through and that just vibrates when you lay other colors on top. So I'll go with the dark blue there and a little brown. You want your attention to be directed to the starfish. So I don't want this too bright and I also don't want my anemone too bright because this is the star of the show, literally. The star of our show. So we need to point to that. Let's, let's tone this down a little bit with some blue so it's not so bright on the sides, um, but the green can show up right on the edges. So look at the difference. When you just add a little bit of dark in the, in the side, your greens um, are pointing you towards your starfish, which is really, you're kind of leading people's eye through your painting. All right, let's add a little pink to this sea kelp down here. And I need to probably add a little more water. And let's, let's have fun with this color. This is that magenta again. There's so much pink sea kelp in the water. I was amazed looking at all the different beautiful pinks and whites and pale pinks, dark pinks. Um, so look at how the orange shows through underneath and then you've got your pink on top. I might add a little bit of pink to the starfish too. So my painting is a little wet right now. Um, I might let it dry for just a couple minutes before I add my top layer, which I told you guys you could use. Um, I've got some crayons or watercolor crayons here. And then I also have a couple of um, oil pastels. If you happen to have oil pastels around or crayons, this is a fun time to add your textures and your really bold colors at the very end. So as you can see, I added blues, browns, pinks, and then I added um, these beautiful blue pops of line here to just accentuate my starfish. All right, so I think now that I look at my painting, I actually like the way it looked 
with just the watercolor pe pencils alone. So I'm gonna leave it as is, um, but if you choose to, go ahead and add a little bold mark with your watercolor crayon or your regular crayons or your oil pastels. You could even add a little line or outline something, um, but it's you're the artist, so go ahead and do what you choose to do and have fun with this project. I'm really happy that you joined us and I'm looking forward to the next time we get to paint together.